is up you guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video this is the big one boys this is it this is a little bit of an impromptu video i wasn't planning on it but today we are turboing the miata we haven't gotten the clutch in we haven't got any supporting fuel mods in or anything but in this video come heck or high water we are putting the turbo on we're putting the intercooler in getting everything going and we're probably only gonna make like five psi if we make any boost at all for the next few weeks um and then when I get a chance, I'm going to lift the car up, put the clutch in because the stock clutch slips pretty easy when you start boosting. And we will be throwing the injectors and fuel pump and tuning for all that and making it make good power. But for now, we are throwing the turbo kit on and we are going to make at least five PSI. Let's see. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, I bought a better light setup or I bought a new light setup. So I'm gonna go grab it and start setting it up so that we can get some good lighting when we start tearing into this thing. Alrighty, so we got ourselves a little Harbor Freight work light special. It's a twin head halogen. Uh, it comes with a stand so that we can get some good light where we're working so we can get some good footage. I'm gonna try something here. See if it works. Here we go. There we go. So we got this nice little halogen stand light. It telescopes like none other. So, you can go up more. Up more. I mean, it literally goes higher than my head, so this should be a great little addition for filming. So I fashioned a little table right here out of a couple of stools and some wood, and this is going to be my tool table. You know, throw all my tools and everything up there. Um, I'm probably just going to end up setting parts on the ground here and there. It's not the greatest workspace, but it'll work perfectly. So first things first. Um, this video might not actually be filmed in order. I might do stuff here and there, and then when I'm editing, I might go in the order that I decide is best. So if you see me, say, installing the intercooler, and then uh, five minutes later, you see me installing the blow-off valve, or not blow-off valve, like waste gate or something with the intercooler not in, whatever. If you see stuff backwards, that's why. But I'm gonna try and break it up into sections so that we can get, you know, we can make it a cleaner video. So, alrighty. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to throw some wood blocks down and drive the car up on them so that we can get the jack underneath it because we lowered the car and now we can no longer get a floor jack under it. So yeah, let's uh, start with that. Alright guys, the next step is we're going to pull the hood off so that we can get good lighting in here, get good camera angles, and have more room to work. So let's jump into that. I forgot these hoods are aluminum, so I can do it myself. I don't wait anything. That's kind of a look, I like it. I'm gonna run it with no hood for a while. Alrighty, for the next step, we're gonna be pulling the intake off, or we're gonna be pulling the front bumper off and cleaning some stuff up and getting ready to pull our exhaust off. I will say I'm excited to finally see this freaking hot air intake disappear, because it's a racing beat, and if I had a shield and some stuff, it'd be great, but whoever put it on here didn't do a very good job, and uh, it's been sucking in hot air. The last filter when I got the car was actually melted. Like, I'm excited to see this gone, <laughs> so let's get with it.
like an hour and a half later, finally have the freaking manifold out. I tried to cut this EGR tube and there was like, legitimately, I don't know if you can even see it, there's like, oh, yeah, like a millimeter holding it on. It finally just ripped out and then uh, I had to cut the exhaust because the bolts wouldn't come off. That was just a freaking pain. My goodness, I haven't been pissed off like that in a while. Spending two and a half hours just trying to get the freaking exhaust out. Haven't even started on the fun stuff or made really any progress, but we finally got it out. Oh, now we can go from there. Now let's see if our turbo kit came with new gaskets and everything. If not, I'm just gonna clean this one and reuse it because it's a multi-layer steel. All right, let's move on to that. I'm gonna, yeah, test fit the turbo manifold. Well, we're gonna have to run to the hardware store, get some hardware for this. It shipped with some, but I'm guessing that it is for the turbo. Yeah, that's turbo hardware. So, unfortunately, um, most of the studs are too short. So we have to go get some studs. Alrighty. Now for the fun part, let's test fit the turbo. Alrighty guys, it is some time later. We just got back from the store because I had to go grab some hardware. Um, whew, so it was a pain in the butt. Um, this turbo cold side, the tolerances are way too tight and so I have to actually tap the cold side off, clock it how I want, tap it back on and then put the retainers on. It will not slide in the housing. Um, I do have the hot side loose right now so I can rotate it but you obviously want the oil feed and drain straight up and down. And it looks like I should be able to 90 tight off of this and run my uh, intercooler piping. So we got that done. Um, right now we are going to jump on to draining the oil and doing the oil return um, into the pan just because that's something that I want to get out of the way. Um, so we're gonna do that and then we will work with the oil feed while we have the oil drained out also. Um, that one is gonna be not fun at all. I'll try and get some video of it, but it is on the driver's side of the engine underneath the intake manifold and I can barely see it and I'm gonna be working under there, so I doubt that you guys will be able to see it. But I will show you the adapter I got that threads in between the sensor and the uh, block and then it has a threaded hole on the side so that you can thread your oil feed into it. So yeah, I will uh, get started on all that right now. So let's jump under the car, drain the oil and start drilling and tapping. All right guys, so I took this uh, Harbor Freight step bit is what I'm gonna be using to drill the hole to uh, put my oil return in. And I don't have enough room to get a drill in there and get it straight, but I do have enough room to get my ratchet in there pretty comfortably. Um, so what I did 
not proud of it, but it works, is I pounded a nine millimeter socket over the shank. So now I can put this little adapter in there and I can throw it on my drill or on my electric ratchet and I should be able to slowly and painfully drill the hole. So yeah, we're gonna do that real quick. Um, some people pressurize the engine by uh, hooking up an air hose at like five PSI to the, the breather on the valve cover to the PCV. Um, I don't have time, I don't have the stuff to do that really. So what I'm gonna do is just cover it in grease. I would do both if I could. But at the very least, I'm just gonna put grease on my drill bit and re-grease it every couple of seconds and try and wipe it down and catch all of the metal shavings on this. Anything we don't catch will hopefully be caught by the oil filter. So yeah, let's uh, do that. I'm gonna grab the grease and get ready. I'm gonna see if I can find my punch and mark it and hopefully it doesn't walk too far. And yeah, let's do it. What's up you guys, it is the next day. We are back. It looks like a bomb went off in here, but we made major, major progress on the Turbo Miata. I didn't record a lot of it because I already have a ton of footage of just getting the turbo set on and uh, mocking up the intercooler and the stuff I did yesterday. So I didn't really want to record all of it. I know it's fun to watch, but when it's too much, it's not as fun to watch anymore. So I'll just show you what I did with the camera off. We have our intercooler firmly mounted. It is solid, not going anywhere. So I ended up making some brackets. All I did was take some strap steel, bend it in L shape, drill a hole, and then I self-tappered it to the core support. There's the one on that side, and it is absolutely solid, especially when you get the cold side piping on there. Now, we got our turbo officially mounted. Yes, um, the stock hardware would not fit, so I had to use a bolt I had laying around to make it work, but it works, that's all that matters. Um, I had to make a couple studs because the turbo manifold is thicker right here than right there, and the stock manifold was that thick all the way around, but it works, we're good. Um, we got the turbo mounted, clocked how we want, and the biggest, most uh, distressful part, <laughs> it took me, I sat there for about, so the biggest thing I got done, I sat there for about two hours last night just trying to figure out how to make it work. Um, I have no room for cold side pipe. So the GoPro died. So the biggest thing for me is I want creature comforts. I want to keep this car a good daily driver. I don't want to make it into a track car. It's not a race car, it's none of that. So I wasn't gonna delete the power steering. I'm not gonna delete the AC. So here is what we did. I am really, really excited. My brother absolutely saved my life. He had a bunch of stock intercooler piping from a 1993 Nissan 300ZX twin turbo and it absolutely saved me. If you're going to be using an eBay kit on a 1.8 liter Miata like this, I would highly, highly recommend going on eBay and I was looking, I found them for about a hundred bucks finding an intercooler piping kit for that car. So, we've got the turbo clock downwards. Let's see, get in here, we have the turbo clock down. We got a boot going to a 45 with about a foot long pipe off of it. That comes down between all these lines right here. Come down, I forgot to put a clamp on that, so I'll do that in a minute. Come to here to a 90, right to our intercooler. It is firmly mounted. The uh, intake side of it was super easy. I just did a 90 down with a 90 pipe shooting over. Shoots over to right here, and then I cut one of my 90s short, put a coupler, put a coupler, cut a, it's not quite a 90, I'd say it's probably like an 80 or a 70 degree angle pipe, cut it, cut it, put a coupler, put a coupler. So this kit, being an eBay kit, um, it was really annoying because it only came with two 90 degree bends and two 90 couplers, and then it came with like, I think six straights four straight pipes and two like 70 degree angled pipes. So it had some stuff, but it wasn't nearly what you needed. And the biggest thing is it was too big for the turbo. The turbo that came in the kit with the intercooler piping, the outlet on the turbo is about inch and three quarter, I would say. And the intercooler piping is like two and a half. So I had to make an adapter. Um, well, actually I ended up running the Z intercooler piping and that's how it worked. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed that. I got my turbo drain drilled. I messed up yesterday. 
and I ended up accidentally uh, drilling it out too big. So the fitting I bought wouldn't work, so I had to go get another fitting. We got it right there. Hopefully it seals. Got the hose right here. All I have left to do is cut it and stick over the barbed end. I'm gonna put a hose clamp on it and we should be absolutely good to go with that. Alrighty guys, I got this giant China wastegate that came in the kit. I got it set up, I pulled it, pulled the top off. It's just six bolts and it had a super stiff spring in it. I put the lightest spring that I could feel out of the three that we have. So hopefully that's like five, maybe 10, hopefully closer to five PSI. Um, so we're gonna start with that. I'm not gonna hook up any, uh, any boost control or anything. I'm just gonna throw it in and see what happens. So I've got the fire ring in there and I've got a gasket. Um, and so we are just gonna throw it up under the car. You really won't be able to see anything, but I guess I'll throw you on time lapse. Alrighty guys, so I have to massage this little pinch weld right here down. There's about an inch gap underneath it. Got to massage it down to get our downpipe on. Alrighty, I should be able to get the angle grinder in here, but unfortunately I have to unplug the lights to do it. So I'm just gonna show you guys when I'm done. Here's a little, let's see, a little before. Alrighty, I got it cut out. I still need to uh, clean it up a little bit, but now, now the downpipe fits. Slide it in, it fits. It's got about a 16th of an inch of clearance, but hey, clearance is clearance. So that's good. I'm gonna clean that up just a little bit and move on to the oil feed, which I really don't wanna do, but I have to do, so yeah. Alrighty guys, so this is the stock Miata oil pressure switch. And this is what I ordered. I had to order it separately. I'll throw the link down below. Um, it came with a little uh, washer, crush washer. But basically this threads into the block now. This threads into the back of it, right here. And then right in this side, the oil feed for the turbo threads into it. So it's just a T, but pretty simple little guy. Um, we're gonna throw that in and hopefully get it rotated to a good position to where we can get the a uh, turbo oil feed on there, which is going to be a pain, but let's uh, let's get her done. I'm not going to record it because there's no room to record it. I can't even see it. I'm doing it all by feel. So, yeah. Alrighty, guys. So it is a few days later. Uh, I've been working on the Miata like an hour or so after work. It's like Wednesday. I started this project on Saturday. Um, but here is what we have so far. Let me give you a little recap. So you have the turbo in. We finally have our cold side plumbed. We've got our oil feed line and our oil return line in. Um, we have our exhaust mocked up. We have it clearanced. We've got it clearanced right there and it fits. I'm gonna clean that up later. We had the clearance right here for that to fit. Uh, we've got our bumper not bolted on or anything. Let me move the light. Alrighty guys, so it is actually a few days later. I am editing the video right now and I ended up having my GoPro die, and I didn't get an outro for the video. So we're gonna end it right here. Uh, I will throw part two up shortly. We're just gonna end it right here. I hope you guys really enjoyed it, and I hope you guys uh, keep watching. Thank you so much for subscribing, liking, commenting. All that support really helps me out. Don't forget to stay hungry, stay humble, stay motivated. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.